Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're going to talk about my 1963 Porsche Carrera 2. Uh, this, I think, is one of the most desirable 356 Porsches that there is. It's certainly my favorite. And interesting how this car came to be. I got a call one day from a, a guy. His dad had passed away, and he wanted to sell his car. And I said, what is it? He said, it's a Porsche, you know, explained what it was, 356. I said, oh, that's okay, twin cam, ding, oh, twin cam, oh, that, that sounds kind of cool. And I've been off the road for quite a while. Now, I, I am certainly no uh, Porsche <coughs> expert, and, and certainly when it comes to twin cams, I didn't know much about them. I, know it was the most, I knew it was the most desirable model, and I said, well, what I normally do when I, I find a car that I want, I try to find some experts on that mark in the area. So I called uh, Jerry Seinfeld and a few other Porsche guys I know, and I said, who are some 4CAM experts in Southern California? And they gave me a few names. And I said, which one is closest to where this car is located? And they said, well, Will Hoyt Restoration's down in Long Beach. He's uh, kind of the premier guy. So OK, so I say, I call this John Will Hoyt. And I say, hey, I found this uh, twin cam Porsche coupe, sunroof, GT seats, the whole bit. He goes, oh, what's the license plate? So I tell him the license plate. He goes, that's my car. I restored that car back in 1976. He sold it to the guy I was buying it from. I said, well, this is perfect. Let me bring him out to look at the car. And I did one better. I brought him here today. John, come on in. How are you? Okay. This is John Will Hoyt, Will Hoyt Restorations. Nice if you've got a Porsche, he's been in the business how long? 30, 40 years? Uh, 37 years. There you I go. So that. he's the guy. <laughs> and this is a car you did back in the early 70s, correct? Yeah, I, I bought this car in 75, I think, right at the end of 75, restored it in 76, and then I sold it in 77. And so when I you sold it, it, it was the year. highest price anybody ever um, gotten for one of these. Yeah, correct? yeah, it was crazy. I, I sold the car for 16,000. Uh, at that point, the highest I'd ever heard anybody getting was 12,000. So I thought, man, I really hit a home run. They'll never be worth more. Yeah, than and you that. know, you have to put that in perspective <laughs> because a new Lamborghini Mirror was 22,000. Yeah. So yeah. that was. It was a lot. Yeah. yeah. And this was the fastest road going Porsche at the time, correct, that you could buy? Well, in 63, it yeah. was. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. was the premier car. It was sort of comparable to. The turbo today, right, you'd right. say. And it was easily twice as much as the standard Super 90 Coupe, right? Yeah, these cars, just the basic model was about $7,000 US. Right. And you could buy a regular 356 Coupe for in the $4,000. Right, right, right. So it was a lot more money. Now, when you got this car back in the 70s, did it require a lot of work? Was it pretty straight? No, it actually ha still had the original paint on it. It had no rust issues at all. Uh, the engine, the car actually only had 46,000 miles. Wow. So it was a low mileage car. It had factory electric sunroof. This is also the first uh, 356 to have disc brakes, correct? Yeah, these are what they have, what they call now annular disc brakes. Right, right. What Porsche did at the time was uh, Dunlop had come up with a brake, uh, a regular disc brake, and rather than to pay Dunlop, Porsche thought, well, we'll, we'll create our own disc brakes. Mm. So what they did was they took a drum and they mounted the uh, special disc and brought the caliper from the inside. And it, it was a good brake. A lot of people complained the pedal pressure was kind of high, but it was the first disc brake, and they they had small problems with them. Right. And then the next year, they decided we're just going to go ahead and pay for the license, and we're going to use the other brakes. Right, so but this one still has the this annular brakes. still has the annular brakes, and you can still get parts for them. And this, of course, is the four cam engine. They call it a twin cam because both cams, two cams on one hand. Yeah, two cams. So, on but it has a total of four cam. Yeah. The normal engine, of course, push rod driven, and this was uh, based on the old um, Furman design, correct? Yeah. yeah, Furman came up with this engine in the early 50s, and Porsche wanted to create their own engine that wasn't based on the Volkswagen for racing. And it was primarily built for the race cars. I don't know that they intended it as a street engine. And it was a complicated design, not theoretically, but to work on it's very complicated right. because there's 
no easy way. The bevel gears drive the cams. The bevel gears, the lash has to be set. And there's no simple arbor to adjust the valve timing. You have to do it by readjusting the gears on the spline and checking each cylinder at, at a time. You know, Bernard, our sharp foreman, his dad was also a mechanic. And whenever his dad had one of these engines, it was 40 hours. He would go in the garage, yeah. shut the door, yeah. sit there with the tweezers, put each, <laughs> put each bearing in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was a roller bearing crankshaft. Yeah. Extremely complicated. Yeah, Perth, these, wasn't it? This, Perth, Perth it? built the roller bearings right. in the early engines. This actually has a plane bearing. This one is, yeah. Yeah, the later ones had plane <coughs> bearings. And of course, this is a two liter engine. So it was the biggest engine they built up to that point. Yeah, the yeah, the yeah. stock engine in the stock car, the push rod, was the 1600. And this so also, this was a lot bigger. Yeah. Now, did it have the GT seats when you got it? Or did you put those No, in? I actually, uh, you know, being wanting all the trick goodies, right. I found a set of original GT seats for the car. It's almost hard to convey the level of workmanship on this car. You really have to drive it. Mm -hmm. to appreciate it. Because I was one of those guys, I came kind of late to the Porsche party. I grew up with Corvettes, and the idea of you could get a 427 Corvette for $2,000 less than a 130 horsepower Porsche. Well, when you're 19 <laughs> yeah. years old, that, why yeah. would you want this? You no. know? But no. it's a bit like fine wine or anything like sure. that. You, know, you get a little older, and then you realize, oh my God, this is one of the most <laughs> beautiful driving cars of all time. Yeah. Let's show them uh, the motor. Well, there's your beautiful four cam engine right there. What did you do to this? Uh? You know, amazingly, the engine ran really well. Uh, as I said, it only had 46,000, although the Carreras usually required uh, engine work before right. they got to 46,000. It had been rebuilt at some point, and I just went through and rebuilt the carburetors, detailed the engine, started right up and ran great. Uh, he's invented something. You've got one of these four cam. If they sit, they tend to smoke because your oil tank is higher. Yeah. And well, consequently, oil will drain down. If it doesn't run for a month or two, it'll back up into the valve guides. You turn the key. Mm -hmm. Huge clouds of smoke. Yeah. And I thought, ah, I just assumed my engine was worn and my valve guides were worn. And I called John, and we discussed rebuilding the engine. But being the honest guy that he is, he said, you don't have to rebuild the engine. There's nothing wrong with the engine. <laughs> It's just, it's dripping down from the, uh, from the tank. So he came up with this rather cool invention. And I've done this on some of my motorcycles. Mm -hmm. It's a one-way valve. Explain how it works. Well, what this is, and it's, it's not a, this is actually a copy of a valve they used in the 962 model Porsche oh, okay. race car. So it's, the idea isn't new, but it's got a really lightweight spring, and it mounts on the oil tank and the suction line of the engine, or the oil pump, is on this side. Right. And so this real lightweight spring just prevents, it's got a seal and it prevents the oil from draining back right. into the engine when the engine's sitting. As soon as you have vacuum on this line, it pops it open and should the spring ever fail, it's gonna fail in the open position. So right. it's, there's not really any kind of a risk factor or anything. But what a difference it makes, because- Yeah, it does make it. When I go down the street, clouds of smoke, somebody reported me to the EPA, oh, your car's polluting. So we figured, oh my God, what do I gotta do? Do I gotta you know, pull the engine and do the valve guides and all this kind of stuff? Yeah. And then we put this one-way valve in, and of course it solved the problem, doesn't smoke at all, so. You know, it's so funny, we all know the iconic 911 now was the classic Porsche. Mm. But when the 911 came, a lot of the purists, ah, I don't know, they didn't like it. They, you yeah. know, Porsche guys don't like change. Yeah, we, so much. The 911 was like a new car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was the classic. <laughs> and you know, it is a wonderful driving car, as you will find in a minute. You know, the cool thing about this car is John restored it back in 76, uh, sold it to this guy. Yeah. Who didn't go more than five or six thousand miles no. in forty years? So consequently, yeah. it's just as he left it, and uh, I think you were really surprised to see it, weren't you? Oh, I, I mean, I had no idea what to expect. I mean, it looked like the day I sold it. Yeah. It, it looked fantastic. He, I think he still had some scope mouthwash in the, in the inside of the car. So you get the car restored for about what twelve bucks an hour? 
Well, what was the going rate back in that, the 70s? That was probably a high rate. Yeah, yeah 10 to 12 <laughs> bucks an hour. Let it sit for 40 years, yeah. boom. Yeah. As you can see, it's got all the original. I mean, it's just beautifully done. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Well, I think it's uh, probably time to go for a ride. Well, I'm not going to drive today. You know, he hasn't driven this car in over 40 years since he restored it. So this will be kind of fun. We'll let him do it and see what he thinks of his own work. See how that 40-year warranty holds up. <laughs> so he's yeah. going to take it out and uh, see if he can relive some memories here. He only built about, what, 490 of these, yeah. something like that? Yeah. 492? Yeah. And I don't think they really intended the, the four cam engine to be something for everyday use. The nice thing about these two liters is they, you know, they didn't really need to be revved up as much as the right. smaller engines. And you could just kind of drive them like a regular car. like I remember it yeah yeah it uh, I think I want it back uh, yeah no. <laughs> you know when he sold the car he put two spare light bulbs down in the pocket <laughs> and they're still there from 76 never needed them never needed yeah. them I mean it's it's pretty amazing you know this is such a wonderful car to drive <clears throat> because you get something of these you don't get in modern cars modern cars are so fast that you hit that rev limiter Oh, within yeah. a second. Yeah. Whereas yeah. this, you get that long pull. Tell me again what you did to the, the transmission. In the transmission, what, at the time, it was really uh, the trick setup. I put a taller first gear and a shorter fourth gear. And for the Carrera engine, it's a high revving engine. So if you remember back then, the speed limit was 55 on the freeway. Right. So the standard fourth gear was ridiculous. It was too, too tall. Right. So using that that shorter fourth gear and the taller first gave me a, a lot closer gear ratio. So made it more fun to drive. I remember driving this to a show once and just having that tack pinned at about 6,500. And <laughs> we're running 115. And yeah. I mean, just tight, no strain. Yeah. I mean, this engine, engine likes to rev. The engine still sounds really good. Oh, it is really it good. Sounds really good. It's really strong. It just loves to rev, and it pulls so strong. Mm -hmm. Let's take it up in the freeway, see how she cruises. And boy, it runs cool. That oil never really gets even no, anywhere near the no. center. No, these engines have so much finning on the heads and right. the cylinders. They they just over engineered it like crazy. The big thing. In Germany, you know, back in the 60s was people wanted to drive at, you know, 200 kilometers on the right. Autobahn. I mean, that was their thing. And this was the car that would do it. Right. Feels good though, doesn't it? Feels great. Smooth and runs great. Yeah, I couldn't do it any better. Over the inside, we missed that before. As you see, standard Porsche 356 dashboard. Got your... Uh, Wood steering wheel. That's the Carrera wheel, right? Is that unique yeah. to the Carrera? Uh, it was an option on other cars, okay. but the Carreras all had it as standard. They always have these quality uh, radios, the Black Punk radio. 160 mile an hour speedometer. Mm -hmm. uh, tack at, what's the red line red, on? Red line's at seven on the tack. Right, right. What was it like to come back and drive it after all these years? You know, I it's all kind of coming back to me. I remember uh, I, I gave you a picture when I showed the car up at Santa Anita Racetrack, and I remember a friend of mine and I, it was one of the longest trips I made in the car, and we drove it up there and showed the car, and I won the show, which was neat, and driving back on the freeway, it, I mean, it feels exactly the yeah. same. Well, it's a, just a great, uh, just a great job, and it's a real labor of love, you know, the people that do these cars, these, these Porsches, it's such an emotional experience, so that's why it's fun to have him do the drive this time instead of me. I think I kind of a sore throat. John, thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, Jay. Hey, Thanks you'll for see the more. opportunity. Yeah, you'll see more with John on our website. We'll bring back some of the cars that he's done over the years, show you what quality work he does. We'll see you guys next week.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>